Coffee Family, it's Dee, and I am coming to you today with the finale of the 12 week Kitty Pool Gardening Series. These 12 weeks have gone by so quickly, and it's hard to believe that we've wrapped everything up. It's It was so much fun. So I'm glad you guys tuned in today for the finale, and today's video is kind of going to touch back and reflect on those 12 weeks and kind of um, address any additional questions you have at the end of the video. I'm going to do a brief recap of each week. I'm going to end the video with lessons learned and Q&A, so I really hope you tune in to the very end because there's probably going to be some really good information that comes out for you. Again, this kitty pool gardening series was so much fun. We grew so many wonderful vegetables and we did some treatments. We did some setup. So again, I hope you guys really learn from this. But without further ado, let's jump into those first 12 weeks. Okay, so week one we did our soil preparation and here is what it looked like before I did all my soil exchange. And I used the miracle Grow potting soil, some peat moss here, and I replenished with the miracle Grow fertilizer. And here is the soil after. Now week two, we planted, and we planted some tomatoes, and we planted peppers. And then we put everything in the bags, and here is what it looked like. On week three, we did more planting and we planted peppers and zucchini. Now we also had our first storm and here's the water in the pools. On week four, we did our caging of our tomatoes because they were getting so big. And then we planted our Blue Lake Bush Beans from seed after a soaking. Now week five, we did some pruning and I pulled off suckers from my tomato plants. And I also saw my beans sprouting. Now on week six, I set up my auto watering system and I went over setting up the timer. And also I went over my hose set up and then I touched on pest control. On week seven, we did some stalking of the tomatoes and we used bamboo sticks. And we also fertilized with liquid plant food. On week eight, we installed that drain plug so any water sitting in the pool would be drained with just a pull of a plug and this was super easy to do. On week nine, we had a Q&A session and we covered all of the questions that were in the comments. Now on week 10, we addressed that blossom end rot and showed how we used tomato um, treatment with our eggshells. Now on week 11, we saw some garden critters in the garden. And we also showed our tomato harvest. Now on week 12, we finally got our snacking peppers harvest, which was exciting. And a presence of that squash vine borer moth wanted to show you him. And now lessons learned in Q&A. So there you have it, the first 12 weeks of my kitty pool garden. I really hope there was some really good information for you in those. And I decided to end this series at 12 weeks because I showed you guys all of the vegetables that I planted up until their harvest day. So I wanted you to get a full grasp of when I planted all the way to harvest. And everything from here on out will basically be a lot more harvesting routine fertilizing and watering so I didn't want to bore you guys with that but I will add additional videos if I see that there's some really great information that may arise during my wrap-up process that I may want to share with you guys so I just really want to thank you guys for everything you guys have been so supportive in this journey and I'm just really happy that I had the opportunity to share it with you but I did want to wrap it up with the Q&A. Um, in week 12, I did say I would answer additional Q&A, and I wanted you to put those questions in the comments below week 12 video. So I've kind of summarized those, and I'll go ahead and answer those. And I answered them on the video as well if you want to check those out. But 
Um, I just want to clarify, I am in South Carolina. I am in zone 8B. That is my planting zone. So I started planting late May to uh, early April. So I did plant this garden at the beginning of April. I had a slight delay because of product availability, quarantines and things of that nature. So I wasn't able to get everything on time to start the video process. So, but that is where I am. I'm in zone 8B. We get very, very hot summers, very rainy springs. So, and I'm sure that you saw that in the video series. So that is where I am. And that is the growing season that I am in. And of course, you guys know that I plant inside of kiddie pools. They're about, I guess, about 10 inches high, four inches wide. And I plant inside these um, Walmart grocery bags, just the plain, nothing special, nothing, nothing really crazy, just the, the plain Walmart grocery bags. These are made from recycled, recycled bottles, as you can see. Okay. <laughs> these are made out of recycled bottles. So they're very porous. They absorb fluid, so I get a lot of questions about these as well, and they're 50 cents at Walmart. Now, I only use these for one year. It's a 50 cent bag, so I only use these for one year. At the end of the year, I remove the soil, replenish the nutrients, and discard the bag. Um, so another um, question I had on week 12 was in reference to any kind of pest control methods that I use. Now I do um, have a video where I did some pest control um, and I showed how I used the BT, um, a product used to kill centipedes and the larvae of the squash vine borer. So I use that for that specific purpose. I try to remain as organic as possible. I used peppermint to, um, I, just, I was told that the squash vine borers don't like the smell of peppermint. So I put peppermint on Q-tips and stuck it down where the tip uh, was sticking out of the soil. And I did that. Um, I also um, would um, spray. Now I did use the seven brand spray. Now where I use this is outside of the pools. I noticed that around the ground surface around the pools, I did see some ants um, congregate around that area. They were getting really close to my pools and I even saw them starting to trail up the side of the kiddie pools trying to get in. So I did treat that surface ground with the seven spray and I didn't put it on the plant, but I did put it around the outer surfaces of the pool, but nothing got in contact um, with my plants. Um, and so, and as far as birds, there was another question about birds. So I fortunately didn't have any issues with any birds um, invading my garden space, which is good, um, at least from, from what I have seen. Um, but if you do have birds that are a problem, I would suggest putting like a mesh layer over your entire plant. Now you do want to make sure that the mesh that you put over your plant would have holes that are wide enough for bees um, to come and pollinate your plants. Um, don't use anything like a tool or, or mesh netting that has a really close knit fiber. You want something that a bee can get in and out of um, in order to pollinate your, your flowers. And that's, 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 in, well, if you don't want to hand pollinate, um, and that's, and that, speaking of hand pollinating, <laughs> that was another question. So I did have a viewer that had a concern about, um, her flowers not being pollinated. So believe it or not, you can hand pollinate your flowers. If you don't have bees in your area, which there's a lot of people who have the same issue. If you noticing your fruits on your plants are getting a couple of inches long and then they start to wither up and die, most likely that is because your plant or your, that flower is not being pollinated. And it's very easy to do. You can do it with a Q-tip or a small tipped paintbrush. And if you, you could take um, pollen from the male flower, which is the flower that has the skinny stem, and you just kind of rub it around uh, the center, get some of that pollen on that Q-tip or paintbrush, and then go inside of the female flower, which has the fat stem that looks like a miniature fruit, and just rub it around the center of that one. And that way they can be pollinated. I've seen people that have had great success doing that. Um, and if you're comfortable with doing that and bees are not in your area, I would strongly suggest doing that. That way you can maximize your production of your vegetables. So there's nothing like planting a bunch of vegetables and losing them all because they don't get pollinated. I know that could be heartbreaking 
but it's really simple and there's lots and lots of YouTube videos that can help you with that if you kind of need a visual. So I would definitely look into that if you're having trouble with um, bees or getting your fruits pollinated. So, um, and another question I had was, um, if you were having an issue with their tomato plants and their stem of their tomato plants becoming uh, blackened or turning a deep purple, um, a lot of times it can, it can range from a lot of things, but the most common is some type of bacterial infection in the soil. And this usually happens if you have soil that you are reusing. Um, sometimes fruits that, that drop off and ferment in the soil, um, they can attract other pests and then that soil can become contaminated so the next year you use it, it, it will be depleted of the nutrients for one, but there could be some type of fungi or something that grows in the soil and that gets soaked up and absorbed by the plant and it'll be reflected in the plant by turning the tips of the leaves purple and sometimes the stems purple or even a blackish color. Now there are a couple of products out there that you could use um, there's something called copper fungicide um, and there's also and forgive me if I don't pronounce this right bacillus subtilis I'll put it in the description box below <laughs> so you guys can take a look at it but also along with those treatments make sure your tomatoes have plenty 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 of calcium this is probably one of the, the major things that I experienced this year with my plants um, was a calcium deficiency I did have some blossom in rot where the tomatoes the very ends of them started to turn black and it almost looked like they were being eaten away um, and that's because it had a, de a deficiency in calcium so you do want to make sure that you um, get either a fertilizer that's specialized for tomatoes or formulate your own source of calcium. I ground up a bunch of eggshells into a powdery surface, uh, a powdery um, substance, I'm sorry, and then I put them inside the soil and kind of agitated it in that top layer and I watered them in for a quick delivery of that calcium to the plant. So over the last few weeks I have seen a dramatic decrease in my blossom end rot. Now funny enough that didn't impact my cherry types, my orange uh, cherry tomatoes, and my pear tomatoes, and my husky reds. They didn't experience it. I re I saw it the blossom and rot mainly on my um, San Marizanos and my Roma types. So I don't know if it's just that type that's more sensitive to that type of you know blossom and rot, but. Just a heads up, that was my experience. So that's what you wanna do. Make sure you have the nutrients that are required and you also wanna make sure that your um, soil has um, is not um, infected or, or has any bacteria in it. Um, the best thing I guess you can do to just be ultra safe is start out with fresh soil every year. Um, and that's the most, I guess, definite way you can probably guarantee that you won't have any um, infected soil or if you do um, use the same soil every year make sure and this is so important make sure you rotate it so if you grow tomatoes in your soil one year do not grow tomatoes in it the next year rotate it with another crop um, for me since I garden in bags I usually rotate between my squash plants and my tomato plants so whatever I if I grow squash plants in soil one year I'll grow tomatoes in that soil the next year and I'm going on I think the third year on this soil so I think this year I'm actually gonna change out our next next growing season I'm changing out all of the soil and this way I can have that fresh start um, and know that everything is good to go since I did really have a bad invasion of the squash vine borer on my zucchini plants <laughs> so um, that's what I that's what I can recommend for that um okay so and another of you had a question about beginning tips oh there's just okay there's so many um when I started gardening I the best thing I can do is watch the pros watch the pros there's so many videos videos out there with gardeners seasoned veteran gardeners that can give you so many tips the gardening process is a learning process. 
You're not going to get it right the first time. You can't expect to get it right the first time. I've been doing this kitty pole garden style for about four years and every single year I learn something new. So this is, this is just a growing process and a developmental process. So don't expect to learn everything. It's just that when you can encounter a problem, reach out to those resources. There's so much information that you can get from the pros out there. Um, I try to put out information as best as I can. I'm not gonna put out anything to you guys that I personally have not tried. Um, you know myself or if I do put something out I'm gonna I'm gonna mention it was recommended by one of the pros so um, definitely start there um, and, and only start with what you can handle um, don't try to till up a half an acre of land and <laughs> for a beginner I mean this is unless you're you're confident and you're ready to go there's absolutely nothing go for it but if you are um, a beginner and you're just starting out I would start with something small this will be a year what I would call to experiment and see what works for you that way the next and following year you'll have kind of a seasoned knowledge to go ahead and proceed and go larger so that is my recommended steps to take for a new beginner and I would start with something um, simple um, tomatoes tomatoes I think are probably the easiest thing I've ever grown um, and with with minimal issues um, next would be the zucchini now there are a lot of issues with zucchini if you live in a region that has the squash vine borer moth. Now there are regions that don't have this moth and you can have plentiful zucchini forever. <laughs> so, but if you don't have that issue or if you do and are willing to um, dedicate the time and energy it takes to control it, it, it grows fast and it produces fast and you get a lot. So that is another good one. Beans are fun for me. I actually didn't start growing beans um, until last year. So I've been growing them two years. I absolutely love them. The recommendation I would give for that is to stage your planting. If you plant all your beans at once, you're gonna get a huge harvest all at once. So I would stage them out one to two weeks apart that way you can continually harvest beans over your growing season and you won't be overwhelmed at once. Um, you can preserve them, you can freeze them. All I did was I cleaned them, chopped them up, blanched them, freezed them, and now I have beans probably to take me through Thanksgiving and the end of the year. <laughs> so only plant what you can handle. It is a lot of fun. It is fun to see um, things from, from what you grow. Eating what you grow is amazing. Um, and look, look at the times that we're in. So, um, a viewer was right. This is perfect timing. With the pandemic and everything going on, you're growing your own fruits and vegetables. This is less time you are going out and being exposed to anything that could potentially harm yourself or your families. So this is a great opportunity to actually learn and start something like this. And you could start next year fresh, or you can even start in the fall because there are fall vegetables out there that you can grow in cold if you're in a cold climate during the later parts of the year absolutely start your broccoli your cabbage your lettuces and things like that that tend to do well in cooler temperatures it's just there's so much knowledge out there there's just just absorb it what I call YouTube University <laughs> A land of learning knowledge. There's so much you can learn from YouTube. There's so many professionals out there. I would definitely take advantage of that. But in summary, I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for supporting me in my journey. I am so glad I decided to do this. There was so much interest in this, and I'm just glad that I can share this year's journey with you. Um, please feel free to go back and check out those other videos. If you would like more Q&A, um, in week four, I did my first session of Q&A, and my week nine was the second session of Q&A, and I covered everything from planting to fertilizing, to setting up my auto watering system. I mean, there's just so much you can learn. Now, I did show you some snippets before this Q&A session, but the full videos are available for you to look all year round whenever you want to. So thank you, I love you guys, and take care, be safe, and I will see you all next time.